look at the new DxO Photo Lab 4. It was just launched a couple days ago, I believe. Um, and they have a special launch uh, promotion going on right now, which is really cool. I've been using DxO Photo Lab since like uh, DxO Photo Lab uh, version number two, and now we're up to four. I just upgraded my version three to four the other day. And the reason I did that because they have this new deep prime noise reduction, and I'm all about noise reduction. If you've ever watched any of my past videos, you know how much I love Topaz Denoise AI. I got to tell you, deep prime is right up on par with that. It's amazing. Um, anyway, they have a special launch offer right now. You can save up to 30% off. And if you click on my affiliate link in the description below, um, it'll take you right to the site. And you could uh, get a uh, trial version of this software, or you can buy it. And if you use my affiliate link to buy it, I make a small commission, which really helps my channel out. It helps me to keep these videos coming to you, and I appreciate that. And thank anyone that would purchase through my affiliate link. That would be awesome. Before I give you the uh, first look of Photolab 4, I wanted you to know there are two editions to this software. There's the Essential Edition and the Elite Edition. And we'll look at some of the differences here in one sec. But the Essential Edition is $99.99 at the launch sale price right now. And the Elite Edition is $149.99. Now, its original price is $199 and the original price of the Essential is $129. But let's take a look and see what the difference between the two are. The left-hand column shows you the essential features. The right-hand column shows you the elite features. Now, everything that's in the left column is also in the right column, but then you have all the extra features in the right column as well. Now, especially take note of the Deep Prime denoising and the DxO Clearview Plus, as well as the new DxO Instant Watermarking. These are some incredible additions to the Elite Edition, which I think makes it worth that extra, what is it, $49.99? I think it's well worth it. I hope I piqued your interest. Let's go ahead and open up uh, DxO Photo Lab 4 and let's take a first look. Here we are inside of Photo Lab 4 in the editing section. And if you look on the right, you'll see all our different tools over here. Let's come up here to workspaces and I'll show you. They have different workspaces, which I really like. And you can totally customize workspaces. I'll do other videos in the future. This is, again, a first look at Photo Lab 4. But you have a standard workspace, an advanced workspace, and what's new in Photo Lab. And we're in that what's new in Photo Lab workspace. So if you look at the right, you can see... Uh, here what's new in photo lab here like the denoising technologies instant watermarking and so on you can make your own uh, workspaces you say i have one called the joy of editing i made my own so there's a lot of customization here it's really cool stuff uh normally i work out of the uh, dxo advanced workspace and this gives you a lot of tools here now you can take tools you can rearrange tools you can do so much with it here but I basically want to hone in on the new features today. As you can see, we have a ton of tools here and they're all broken down in sections like light, color, detail, geometry, local adjustments. Uh, then we have DxO Viewpoint and DxO Film Pack. I'll save these for other tutorials. But anyway, uh, we, ha we now have this new feature here. We can filter things out. Like for instance, if we go to this first icon and click it, this deals with all the the tools that deal with the lighting of your image. The second icon deals with the color, everything that deals with coloring of your image here. The third one deals with uh, detail, like your denoising, your deep prime, your prime. I'll show you how this stuff works here shortly. Uh, lens sharpness and so on. And then we deal with our geometry, like our lens corrections and things. And then we can deal with uh, local adjustments, Local adjustments are amazing here. If you've ever used like uh, Nick software like Vivesa 2, now you'll probably know this, but DxO have bought out uh, Nick the Nick software collection and they own the rights to all that technology now and they've incorporated it into DxO. So it's really powerful editing. And that's what this section's for, local adjustments. And then the last is effects like, for instance, like watermarking, which is a new feature and things like that. So this is a great uh, tool up here, the filters that get you right into the tools that you need and it makes it a lot less confusing. But all these tools can be changed, rearranged, and so on and so forth. But I'll do other videos on that. But that's the first new feature. This next new feature may seem small, but it is mighty. I'm going to click off the lights um, 
filter right here. Now here's all the different tools that I have set up here from the uh, advanced workspace, right? And you can see there's a lot of tools in here, but see this little toggle switch right here. When you click it, it shows you all your active adjustments, only the adjustments you've used, which really narrows things down for you. And it takes all that confusion out. And I love that. Now, the cool thing about DxO is whenever you open up your image, it's doing a lot of things behind the scenes for you, making adjustments, uh, doing your geometry adjustments, uh, getting your lighting set up properly for you and everything. It does a lot. So it really minimizes what you really have to do to uh, process your image and edit it. It does a lot of that stuff right for you when you open up your image. But you can see everything that it has done. Now, everything that you see right here, I didn't do anything to this image right here. Everything you see here, is what DxO has done upon opening up this image. And then when I click the toggle off, we see all our tools come back on. And then when I click it on again, you'll see what DxO did at the opening of this image right here. And that's really an amazing thing. And it will really avoid a lot of confusion. On to another new feature. Let's uh, click this toggle off. Now look at all these tools right here. Now you notice some of these tools have these little blue stars by them. And then you'll see these grayed out stars. Anytime you find a favorite tool, a tool that you find you're using a lot and you really enjoy it, but how do you find it amongst all these tools? Now, this is not all the tools that Photolab has. There's a ton more in here, but this is what we're showing right now. But all the tools that you have starred as a favorite, if you come up to the star right here next to the toggle that I showed you just before this, click on that star and it's going to show you all your favorite tools. It's going to group them up for you. How cool is that? Can you see how this is going to really help you out and save you a lot of time hunting around for a tool? You're like, where is that tool? Click your star. You'll find it really fast. The next new feature is history. Now, see this panel right here where it says history? and advanced history right now it says applied default preset so that's all that's been done to this the default uh photo lab for preset has been applied to it now if i click compare right here you can see the before and the after okay and then my toggle is turned on here so this is everything that that uh photo lab has done to it so far now anytime i add a new filter or whatever make a new adjustment that'll be added to the history over here let me go to a different image here like uh this eagle flying right here and you can see all the different things that have been done to this image thus far i tried a uh, black and white uh, uh preset on it so if i click it you'll see that preset i can go anywhere back and forward in history and that's really cool where i could clear that history out so the history is a nice new feature Next new feature, batch renaming. Now I'm in the library module right now, the photo library module. Now say for instance, I wanted to take these first five images here and rename them, okay? So let me go ahead and select them. I'm gonna right click any one of the images here and click on rename selected images. And now I've been given some options. Now see this drop down menu, I'm gonna click this. We can replace text, add text, or rename and add counter. Let's start out by uh, replacing text. So we're on replace text. So we want to change the text here. So like say we want to get rid of the underscore MG underscore and give it a different name there. Okay, so let's go ahead under find and let's uh, type in underscore. Make sure if it's capital, you type a capital MG and now another underscore. And now we're going to replace it with, let's say like uh, fall, fall 2020. All right, and you'll notice down here where it says new, you can see fall 2020.01.dng, so that's really cool. Now, when I hit rename, it will go ahead and rename all those images. It'll keep the, the numbers, but it'll get rid of the IMG and put fall 2020 in the place of that on all five images. So that's really cool. So that's one scenario. Click rename and that will get done. The next scenario will be to add text. And that's just simply adding a text to what's already there. So here, let's do again, let's do fall 2020. And now we see, and I love how they show you down here what it's gonna look like. It's gonna look like this fall 2020 with the image names. And you can have that before, or you could put it after. So you have those choices, which is really cool. And then just click rename. And then lastly, we can rename and add counter. On this one, I'm going to put Ohio Pile, because that's where I was. Ohio Pile, and I'll say 2020. 
And uh, then we can do start at. I'm going to start at the number one. And how many digits? You know, you can set up how many digits you want. I want two digits. And you could have it start before the name or you could have it start after the name. I think I want to have it start, um, let's start before the name. Now, when I click on rename, and you can see what it's going to look like. 01 Ohio Pow. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to have a space between the 01 and the Ohio Pow. So I'm going to come up to the O and Ohio Pow and type my space bar. And so now I have a space. So this is what it's going to look like. 01 Ohio Pow 2020.dng. The second image will be 02, okay, Ohio Pound, whatever the name was, okay? So let's go ahead and click rename. And now we'll see this is 01 Ohio Pound 2020, 02 Ohio Pound, 03 Ohio Pound, 04, and 05. So that is the batch renaming. This is going to be very helpful. Next up, we have selective copy and paste. Now, this particular image right here, number 0140. Uh, I made some adjustments on it. So if I right click it and come down to copy correction settings, and then if I go to any image I want, say like the image next to it, if I right click it and say paste selected corrections. So I get this dialog that comes up, paste correction settings, and say I want everything on here except the crop. So I'll uncheck the crop here and say paste and watch it'll paste that same adjustment on there without the crop and same here I could come here and click on the first image and I'll shift click over to here I'm going to right click again and paste uh, paste selected corrections and so I can grab a bunch at once and I'll do everything but the crop and click paste and then each one of those three images will get that adjustment. This is a real time saver. The next feature is instant watermarking. We can put watermarks in the images. We can batch those out on a bunch of images at once. I'm not going to get into all that right now, but I just want to show you briefly how this works. You can load up an image as part of your watermark. You can click browse here and find an image. I'm just going to do a simple text. So let's do a text. I'm just going to do my name. Dave Kelly. All right, and you'll see there's my name right down at the bottom. Now I can move it around to any spot that I want in the center or whatever. I could scale it, change the size of it. You know, we could uh, change blend modes, give it a multiply blend mode where we can't see that. We can give it an overlay blend mode, whatever you want to do here. I'm just going to keep this in a normal blend mode for now, and then we can adjust the opacity, pull the opacity back watermark our images we can create a new preset if we wanted to and we could also change the font right here if you click on here we could change it to say like a different font whatever you want to do i'll just use that font right there but that's watermarking and like i said too you can also batch a bunch of images out with watermarks on them which is really cool i'll, I'll show you some of that stuff in other tutorials but i just want to show you we can now add watermarks to our images i've saved the best for last deep prime noise reduction. This is brand new in Photo Lab 4. Let me go ahead and zoom in on this image. This is an ISO 1600 image, so you can see it's got a lot of noise on it. It's shot with an older uh, Canon 5D Mark II, so it, it had a lot of noise in it. Right now I'm set up with high quality noise reduction. You can see that noise. Now, in order to see the prime reduction and the deep prime reduction, we can't see it on the main screen. We can only see it on the on this little window here because it's very labor intensive on your computer when it's processing the prime and the deep prime. So I'm going to go ahead and click prime first and watch this window here. Give it a second. Okay, and you can see it. It's much better than the HQ. Now let's click on the deep prime. And now look at that. It is super, super clear. It does a beautiful, beautiful job. Now, when I left click and hold my mouse on this little window, you can see the noise. That's all the noise that's in that image. And here's after the deep prime. Now, same thing with the prime. I'll hold, I'll hold my mouse in, left click it, and that's noise and that's the prime. And again, here's the deep prime the noise and with deep prime. I went ahead and saved that image so I could show you a comparison. Here's the original with no noise reduction. And here it is, I'm clicking my compare button, comparing the new uh, deep prime denoise version. And this is what it looks like. So look at the detail, absolutely no noise whatsoever. So again, here's the original. 
and here's the deep prime. So, man, doesn't that do a beautiful job? Well, there you go. Say goodbye to digital noise with the new Photo Lab 4 with the new DxO Deep Prime technology built right into it. It's a great update from uh, Photo Lab 3 to Photo Lab 4. And as I said earlier, if uh, you're interested in this product, uh, please just click on my affiliate link in the description below. And uh, when you do that, I make a small commission, I'll be honest with you, and it helps me to keep these videos coming to you. Uh, it doesn't save you anything extra, but right now you got that extra 30% off up until I think it's November 19th. Yeah, November 19th of 2020. So you can take advantage of that sale or you can download a trial and try it out for yourself. Hey, if you enjoyed this video today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I'll be doing more of these Photolab 4 videos on different uh, things that you can do with Photolab and work with it. And um, if you have any comments and questions, please leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you.